Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this is actually going to be a bit of a niche video but I'm making it for the people that I know would like to hear it and I feel like it would help and it's actually going to be a hearing aid update. So if you are a fellow hearing loss individual like me or you're curious, you would like to educate yourself or find out more then please do keep watching. So I've wanted to make this video for a really long time because I've actually had my hearing aids now for a whole year so it's my hearing aid birthday and what an amazing thing to celebrate. I haven't made it sooner purely because I've obviously just had Stanley who if you are new to my channel he's my third baby and um, he's three months old now and I, I turned like a year of hearing aids right in the middle of him like you know being still quite young and small and I've just not got around to filming this and I thought when I do it I wanted to do it properly because I appreciate that lots of my uh, everyday regular viewers won't have hearing aids and won't relate to this video maybe or not be interested in this video and I think that's absolutely fine because it's not something I would have watched a couple of years back either um, but I get a lot of views on my old videos that I've done around hearing aids still and I get questions and updates and I get people saying that it's like really helped them and I want to keep making videos like this because I know how scary it is to go through that change and I just want you to know that like a year on is even better than it was uh, when I last updated so yeah, I've had hearing aids now for over a year, about a year and or maybe two months I think now and um, for anyone that's not aware, I have mild to moderate hearing loss as a result of a syndrome that I've had since I was born. So I have non-ocular stickler syndrome and that is a syndrome that basically affects the collagen in my makeup and the way I was born and made and um, there were other like traits and parts of it like sequences that are part of it as well and um, so I was born with like a palette and I also have something called Pierre Robin sequence which was an issue with my lower jaw when I was smaller and I had issues breathing and feeding initially when I was born. Now this syndrome also has a 50% chance of being passed on to any child that I grow and carry so my daughter my middle child Daisy also has it and it was having Daisy that actually prompted me to get my hearing checked in the first place so if you've watched my older videos you'll know that at a routine hearing test for her because um, stickler syndrome does commonly affect your hearing I was offered a quick test there and then by the audiologist because I'd mentioned like how would I go about getting myself tested because I'd noticed that my hearing had really declined and uh, he tested me there and then said yeah I think you've got mild to moderate loss but what I'll recommend you do is go and book an appointment, he gave me all the details of what to do and I did and you know lo and behold I did need hearing aids, I had them in both ears and I don't even know if you can see, I don't, I don't know if you can, but I wear them every single day. I hate it now if I forget them or if they run out of battery and I've not got a spare set on me because I just feel like someone's turned the light off in my world almost, like at least in relativity to sound. It's like someone's just muted everything and all the colour has gone and I think that's like the best way of describing it. It's just really frustrating like being underwater all the time and not quite being able to get the t true beauty of sound and what the world sounds like and you don't really appreciate what the world sounds like until you've experienced hearing loss I think because it's just it's so dramatically different and you don't always realise because hearing loss doesn't normally happen like that it happens over time you don't realise quite how bad it's gotten until you get hearing aids and then you realise the massive massive difference in what you can hear and the way you experience everything it's just it's incredible and I think one of the biggest um, things that I was scared about would be the way that people approach me and the way that people treat me and whether or not people would treat me differently or whether it would you know be awkward or people would judge me but hand on heart and I am very lucky that I got hearing aids as a 29 year old adult so now I'm 30 and I have never had any issues whatsoever if people have noticed they don't care and uh, no one's ever said anything to, the, to me about them now I'm lucky I do have quite long hair and they are covered up a lot of the time but I always wear my hair up in ponytails I wear like loads of different hairstyles and I'm also really open about having them because I don't see why I should be ashamed because 
a lot of people in this world have glasses for sight problems and it's still a hard thing to do. I used to have glasses when I was little actually and I know that for some people like choosing to get glasses and finally ask for help is, is a massive thing in itself but for some reason there is added stigma around hearing and I think it's because it is less common and with hearing it's not like with sight you look at something and you notice that things are blurry a lot of the time if you have sight problems it's normally quite obvious to you first hand whereas with your hearing especially if it happens over time you don't really know any different until it gets to the point where maybe it is quite dramatically different or someone maybe has mentioned it to you and then you think oh well maybe I should get this checked out then but it is daunting and it feels like you know to have an aid every day that you put in to function almost is is quite a big jump from going to just getting up in the morning and hopping in the shower and getting on with your day it is it's a big big change and if you're in the position right now where you are about to get hearing aids or you're considering asking for some support i really do relate to that but i promise you it is not as bad as you think it's going to be i do have a special sort of bit of respect and sympathy for those of you who might be going through this at school because I understand what it's like at school where people aren't as like mature or developed enough to understand that you're doing this and that makes you a really amazing person for going hang on a minute I need help but trust me like if people are mocking you for being slightly different and doing yourself a favour and giving yourself the biggest gift ever which is the gift of hearing again then they are not worth your time I promise you hearing your favourite song more clearly, hearing the birds singing and hearing your favourite people laugh at your jokes is far more incredible and beautiful than any unkind words or lack of understanding and please don't ever ever let people like that put you off because I feel really strongly about that and that's another reason why I'm doing these videos because I want people to watch them and if they aren't hard of hearing and don't suffer from hearing loss I want them to watch them and learn and watch them and understand what it might be like for people that do have hearing aids what is life like now a year on is this my new normal I would say yeah yeah it is I mean there's nothing there's nothing bad about it anymore like the only gripes I have I will run through like the small negatives if you will first one is itchy ears I still get itchy ears now and again and like I take my hearing aids out and oh gosh it's gone quieter already but this bit here goes inside your ear this bit goes at the back of your ear and then this little string here can be cut off if you want it to be cut off but it's really handy for pulling it in and out and this little fluted bit here it just oh the, the ear knows that there's something in the way and it's itchy and tickly sometimes so I am often you will see me like if I'm having a conversation and I'm relaxed in your company I'll pull it out and I'll be like mm, for a little bit because it's just it's just a foreign object that's not really meant to by nature's way be in there um but other than that it's fine the other thing that I have done on occasion in fact let me take this back out again so I can show you um every night what I will do before bed this is the little bit here that opens up and you can see here that there is a small battery now what I've been doing is that every night I go to bed and I open this up so the battery isn't wasted and also my hearing aids will go they'll, they'll start beeping intermittently when they're running out of battery so if that happens overnight and I've got it all closed up I'm not going to hear that beeping so then I'll put them in the next day and I won't think anything of it until I think hang on a minute I feel like I'm deafer than normal and it will be because I'm basically just wearing earplugs then because the batteries run out and I haven't noticed so sometimes when I forget to do that and they do run out it is so annoying and quite embarrassing because I feel like I've wasted the whole day having worse hearing than I would do if I had them out and um, just because obviously this is barring any noise getting through my ear properly uh, so that's annoying and then sometimes like I've run out of batteries 
in important situations and I've forgotten to get new ones. So I remember once I was going to go to an event, to an event with work, um, obviously I, I do like filming and stuff a lot of the time, I'd run out of batteries, it was late at night and I forgot to get new ones and Mark got them on the way home from work and managed to find them in a local shop and I just felt so lucky. I was in tears because the thought of being without my hearing aids in a social situation made me feel really anxious and I didn't like that very much. And then sometimes I do get in the shower and nearly wet my hair and ruin my hearing aids and then eventually it's actually fine because I realised just as I go to like, you know when you put your head back and you're like, I'm just going to wash my, no I'm not, and I take them out and throw them <laughs> and um, they're, they're fine, they're never damaged, but it's just one of those where you still have to remember because they do, for every time that they tickle your ear, they're most of the time like you don't know that they're in there um, and they're just so useful sometimes I do get a little bit of feedback if I put headphones on to edit which is annoying so I tend to take them out when I'm editing videos just because otherwise they squeak or I feel like everything's too loud in my head and I can't really concentrate um, but other than that they have they, they've done me really well I did have an iffy period in terms of my own like hearing loss I guess you could say where I was starting to worry towards the end of my pregnancy with Stanley whether or not my hearing loss was getting worse and I knew that I was due at an appointment I was meant to be seen after six months which will have been sometime near towards Christmas like just before Christmas and I hadn't had an appointment through so I just assumed that maybe I'd gotten confused and got that wrong and I just noticed that I couldn't hear things as well and I finally rang up after I had Stanley and I was like I just really want to get checked out again and the audiologist that I saw basically said that these parts of your hearing aid so this is aid here and I have the phonak ones if anyone's wondering and then this part here you can remove and this whole section here needs to be replaced every six months because it does wear it can get filled up with like earwax over time it becomes like flimsier and softer over the time and it doesn't carry sound properly and I didn't know that because I hadn't been told that when I first got them so I went through again probably nearly six months with um worth hearing than I should have done. Um, so now that's rectified and I will be seen more regularly. They'd like made an error on the system and never ever contacted me. And it's fine, it's just the way it is. Like we have the NHS in the UK and we're really, really lucky to have access to healthcare like this and have hearing aids that are free for me to use. So that is definitely something to think about. If you do notice a decline that you don't know if necessarily it's you, then make sure you contact your healthcare provider and book in an appointment. I am booked in to have a further hearing test or a proper evaluation just to test my levels again just to see if these need resetting or just in case but as far as I know I think everything is fine with my syndrome it's probably worth saying that as I age my hearing probably will get worse which is is scary and I try to put that to the back of my mind most of the time because modern medicine is incredible and um, it's not that I want to lose my hearing though and I don't want it to get worse but I can't really do anything about it so it just makes me feel even more confident now that I actually have these and I'm being looked after rather than struggling for longer because I was too afraid to ask for help but yeah honestly they are the best thing that I have ever done like it was that one of the hardest things I've ever had to do is go back there and ask for a hearing test and I knew what the answer was going to be and I knew that I was going to have hearing loss but it was hard to admit to myself that actually like I wasn't just like everybody else but you know what I am one kick-ass person I'm a nice person I don't think that you look at me and go oh you know she's got hearing aids and she's different from everyone else it doesn't matter that I've got hearing aids any more than it matters if someone has glasses or someone has a wheelchair or anything like that I feel like we we need to look past these things for ourselves like we give all this great advice to each other about like you know being proud of yourself and putting yourself first and stuff but sometimes we fail to take that advice for ourselves so for many years I wouldn't judge anyone that had a hearing aid but for some reason I judged myself and I never know why I put myself through that because I wasted so many years with poor hearing when I could have been hearing in technical and I'm just so glad now that I am a proud owner of hearing aids and I will never ever look back so if you do feel like maybe you need a bit of help and support in that area click off this video now don't even watch me anymore pick up the phone 
call your doctors and get an appointment booked in because it would be the best thing that you've ever done, I promise. So I want to end this video just with a few tips for anyone who might be watching this who doesn't suffer from hearing loss but would like to support other people or just like learn a little bit more and know what the right and wrong things maybe are to do just to sort of help people who have hearing loss out a little bit. So the first thing I would say is make sure that you always speak clearly. Uh, don't rush your sentences if you can help it and don't mumble or hide your face because while we have um, hearing aids which make everything louder, they do make everything louder. So your voice is louder, yes, but if you're driving around in a car, all of the traffic and the car engine is louder as well. And the children in the back seat are louder, or if you're in the living room, the telly's louder, or the birds singing outside are louder. And it's quite hard to differentiate with hearing aids. You can't tune into a soul sound like the natural hearing ear can. You, you just get everything turned up. It's like just turning up the telly and you can't just turn up one character's voice or turn up this one noise. It's everything all at once. So sometimes that doesn't necessarily mean that we can hear you any better. And it would always just be a really, really big favor if you could just speak clearly and look at us. Um, also, if we are looking at you and we're focusing on your mouth a lot, <laughs> because I'm sure you've got a lovely smile, but it's also because we're trying to lip read a little bit just to help ourselves. And um, that's a trait that I picked up from having hear hearing loss for many years. And I still do it now just to make sure that I'm actually getting the right words, particularly in a very loud or noisy situation. And yeah, so just don't be put off if we do glance down at your lips now and again. We might want to kiss you, we might want to kiss you, but it's probably because we're reading your words too. <laughs> and then another thing is just please don't be frustrated if we ask you to repeat yourself. We could sometimes ask you several times. I still say it now. I am the first to admit, put my hands in the air, that I really struggle with certain accents. So I struggle to pick up your like words and what you're saying if you talk quite quickly or if you have a strong accent that maybe isn't common to me so if you do come from perhaps another country I sometimes struggle and it's not me being rude and I'm not trying to make you feel uncomfortable either it's just it takes me a little bit longer so if you can like repeat yourself and do it clearly and just like with a smile on your face it makes me feel so much better because sometimes I feel like a pain and the worst thing about that is if someone goes oh no no it doesn't matter and then like carries on a conversation with someone else because you should always try and let us be the decider of whether or not something should be heard because we really care about what you've got to say and when you don't want to repeat yourself it can be really hard because we feel like then we've like missed out on a really great conversation with you or we feel like a bit rejected so it's always always worth just taking a second and thinking gosh it's harder for them than it is for me I'll repeat myself does that make sense and yeah the other thing is as well if you do see someone with, with hearing aids or like you're out and about like if you are really curious and you've got a good relationship with that person don't be afraid to ask about them and learn a little bit more because I'm always happy to talk about my hearing aids and I think a lot of people are too and um, we're not afraid of wearing them most of the time and just like accepting it a little bit more and like having people be like oh yeah cool rather than like oh my god what's that in your ear do you know what I mean um it's always good to talk about this sort of stuff and it's always good to learn more things like I am trying every day to learn about the people and what their different needs are and um, I would like to see hearing aids be something that are more popularly and positively talked about because I think it will help a lot of people who have gone through what I've gone through too but yeah that is the end of this video I hope that helped if you do have any questions leave them in the comments I will I will have a look through and see if I can help I'm no expert this is just like my experience and everybody's experience is different but I just urge you, if you feel like you need some help with your hearing, then don't forget to ask for it because it will change your life. But yeah, I am going to love you and leave you. Have a fab day, whatever you're up to, even if this is just a fleeting visit. I hope this video helps and I will see you next time. Bye.